and welcome to Mojarto on Art. India Art Fair is the biggest art event on the South Asian calendar, and it happened last weekend. Whether you were there and want to relive it, or you missed it and want to see what it was all about, we've got you covered in four walks around the fair with four leaders from the art world. Come along. This is Mojarto on Art. <laughs> contemporary art, what comes to mind? I'm gonna guess you don't think of those paintings that you see all around the markets here, made by people who don't live in cities. But the fact of the matter is that these media as well are being innovated on by contemporary artists who work in vernacular art forms. We followed Annapurna Garimela of Jackfruit Research and Design around Vernacular in Flux, an exhibition at India Art Fair that explores these exact themes. For better or for worse, contemporary art may vary from artist to artist, but it is still expected to be a certain way. It's often conceptual, it's often multimedia, its maker often attended art school or worked in an urban environment. If not, it is dismissed, pushed aside with diminishing terms like craft, traditional, and artisanal work. These questions were asked and explored through Vernacular in Flux, an exhibition of works made by Indian artists whose expertises are various Indian heritage art forms. We followed curator Annapurna Garimela of Jackfruit Research Design around Vernacular in Flux. All of us together have tried to create a space in which a conversation can begin about what these kinds of art forms and artists are doing and what's the place they hold in the India Art Fair. Is it part of the same platform or are they in the same space but in different worlds? So I'd like to take you inside and introduce you to some of the work and perhaps then we can have a little conversation about the issues involved. So, come. I'd like to begin by introducing you to the work of the late Jangar Singh Sham, who was from a region called Bastar in Madhya Pradesh. He comes from a community who are hereditary bards, storytellers. So he's very good at storytelling and music, of course. So when he was um, given a canvas and paint, he painted this amazing image. And Jay Swaminathan, the renowned uh, thinker and artist, invited him to come to Bhopal to Bharat Bhavan. And there he started practicing on canvases and oils and learning techniques like printmaking and uh, other kinds of what we normally consider as modern art forms. And he actually went to Australia, which is little known fact, but he did go to Australia on an artist exchange program between Aboriginal Australian artists and um, Gond and other Beale, other artists. So both from the technique of doing tattooing on the body and also from the dotting technique that Australian artists have developed, this kind of work came out. When you look at other work in this section, these are all people who were taught by Jangar Singh Shang. His nephews, cousins, uh, sisters, brothers-in-law, and all of them have evolved very interesting um, language out of what he initiated. They've come to do their own thing. So when Devi Art Foundation asked us to make commission work, we asked three of those people who are now practicing as individual artists to come back together as a collective. So when you go to artwork like this book, these two books, these are called Purana Shadi, old, old style marriage, and Naya Shadi over there, new style marriage. The reason why they're two different lengths is because in the forest and in the villages near the forest, work, weddings had a long, duration they the, and many different participants trees birds community members many things had to be done it took 47 pages to tell that story when you look at the new marriage on this side what you see 
is what happens to marriage when people start urbanizing. So love starts with perhaps the meeting of two people, a exchange of a photograph. Then the cell phone is what sends the message of love between the boy and the girl. They meet and then they go off on a motorcycle. It just takes a few pages to tell that love story, that marriage. So it's very interesting how it's an ethnography of what's happening within their community. The India Art Fair is now being a part of a larger stable of art fairs that has a global reach. And it's the first of a regional art fair that has been brought by MCH. So what does that mean that one of the ways that they represent their regionalness, they turn to these kinds of art forms? I don't have an answer to that question. I do know that historically, whenever we've asked ourselves to represent our regionalness, we have turned to the styles from temples, from courts, from our uh, communities in various parts of India to represent regionalness. But what's happening, of course, is that those artists who are practicing in temples or practicing these art forms from communities are evolving in their own contemporary. So these are the other contemporaries that are here. From vernacular art, we move to photography, where Diva Gujral of Photo Inc. shows us around their one-of-a-kind exhibition. The medium of photography is evolving, and Photo Inc. Gallery in New Delhi has remained on the cutting edge of what the medium has to offer. At India Art Fair, Photo Inc. brought together minimalist photographic creations with rarely seen glimmers of art history and expressive flora alongside urban din. My name is Diva Gujal and I'm a PhD student working on contemporary photography in South Asia from the years 1960 to 1975. We're looking now at a Dutch photographer called Bas Muis. Bas Muis has been doing a series that plays with a sort of still life photography inspired by the Dutch Golden Age and that sort of hyper-realism that existed in still lifes in the 17th century in Holland and reconciling that with images of Mughal flora and fauna that one would see, for example, on the Taj Mahal, that sort of Pietra Dura work. They've been taking, taken by creating a series of 20 or 30 photographs of these particular flowers and then they're manipulated on a computer so that different aspects of the photographs come through. So these are actually quite sort of heavily constructed images in a series that, on a sort of style that's called post-production. This is specifically for um, sort of Mughal inspired work. So it's really you can see a reconciliation of the two styles in his, his body of work. So one of the earliest styles of photography was something called the photogram. It involved using a piece of very light sensitive paper that when it was selectively exposed would leave marks on it. For example, if you left, say, a flower on this piece of paper and you exposed it to the sunlight, it meant that it would form almost a negative of anything that was left there, in this case, the flower. It's something that we see occasionally, but not very often. A very young artist called Srinath Ishwaran has started to apply it. He's born in 1989, but he's really using and adopting a form of photography that existed really from the inception of photography, from about the 1830s. This is a series of works that was created by leaving elaborate stencils on photosensitive paper and then exposing it selectively. They're in creating these compositions that are more similar to minimalist painting than they are to photography itself. So one of the most interesting photographic additions to the art fair is this wall that has a series of photographs of modernist painters from the 60s down to the 80s done by the photographer and art critic Richard Bartholomew as well as, as his son, the photographer Pablo Bartholomew. We have a series of images of, paint, of painters, uh, often that have been taken first by the father and then by the son, something like 10 or 15 years apart. Um, so here, for example, we have the painter Gaitonde, first taken by Richard Bartholomew, and then 15 years later taken by his, his son Pablo. Similarly, here we have Jairam Patel, the prolific painter and artist taken a few years later by his son Pablo. We see through their work a very interesting documentation of the lives of the artists. A lot of these artists' works are available and visible elsewhere in the fair, 
But then through these photographers, you sort of are reminded of the lives that were lived with these painters. We'll get back into some more walks around India Art Fair very soon. But first, let's see what you can do in the art world this week. From storytelling in Bengaluru to a music festival in Udaipur, here are your upcoming events. Udaipur, you cannot miss the Udaipur World Music Festival 2017, which takes place this weekend, February 10th to the 12th. It's the second edition of the Landmark Music Festival, featuring Kabir Cafe, London Community Gospel Choir, and Azam Ali, among others, all together on one platform. Dili, head to Instituto Cervantes to see David Escalona and Chantal Mayar in Donde Mueren Los Pajaros, a work in progress in dialogue between the plastic work and the poetic writing that has at its theme an aspect of our relationship with innocence. It's on until February 12th. Bengaluru, watch Storytelling by Parag Dube in Bazaar. This play brings you the stories of people from a bazaar who you might not meet every day, but they have stories that you must know. The show is on in Indranagar from February 11th to the 12th. Dili, head to the Korean Cultural Center to see Save As, an exhibition by Cha Jir Yang and Lo Kyun Yi. These two Korean artists formed a relationship with their audience through a contemporary art phenomenon by storing their memories in different places under different names. This fascinating exhibition is on until March 1st. Hope you can make it to one of these events. We've got two more walks after the break, so don't go anywhere. Mojarto on Art will be right back. <laughs> 